So, what would have been an arm day today, like a full-on tries buys day, is gonna get cut short just to tries. I keep just retweaking my right bicep. Uh, not to the point where I think, you know, I'm gonna curl a 50 and it's gonna fucking fall off or anything like that. But I can tell, I mean, I just took a day off like a week ago of buys. And I was like, all right, they feel good. Do another bicep workout. Oh, it's kind of twinging at me again. So yeah, I'm being a little bit irresponsible by trying to push through it. I gotta follow my own advice. If something hurts, if something's out of whack, if something is off kilter, and you know it for a fact, then what's what's the worst situation you could do? Keep dealing with it and just say, oh, who cares? And then wait for it to like become a serious problem? Or pump the brakes, back off, right? wait until it's sort of recovered itself or in some instances, maybe you're going to have to do a little bit of uh, recovery work. Like, I'll just kind of go off on a little bit of a tangent. Anytime that I've ever had a crunchy shoulder, especially how I used to do incline bench, even just earlier this year, I've kind of changed it since then. But when I used to do incline bench, I would have my elbows flared way out. Like now I pretty much have my elbows sort of tucked in by my sides. But I used to have them way up here, and that would put so much pressure in, well, maybe not pressure per se, but just not a natural movement path for my shoulder. And then I'd have a crunchy ass rotator cuff for, you know, weeks, and I couldn't do heavy pressing like a total fool. So what did I do instead of just heavy pressing, dealing with it and just being like, oh, this fucking hurts, uh, you know, back off, no heavy pressing, just lighter fly base movements, and then, you know, a lot of rotator cuff work. And you know, now I'm benching with a good shoulder. So you can take two, let's say, let's say this, two lessons can typically be learned whenever you tweak something or whenever just some shit goes down. Sometimes you can't predict it, you know, whatever. Right. A, you'll learn, okay, I better not do that again. Yeesh. And then, I mean, over time, you'll just get better at potentially recognizing warning signs, right? We've all heard the phrase, what should you do before you wreck yourself? Exactly, exactly. So I may even have to change up my bicep training a little bit. Or no, 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 not my bicep training, my, um, my back training. Because even when I do really heavy rows or pull downs, oh my God. Sometimes my bicep does come into play, as a, even though it's only a secondary muscle. So I might have to chill out on any kind of back movements which activate my bias too much. Or maybe just go a little bit lighter so I can only have my back activate. But I gotta make sure for the next, well, as long as it takes for it to get back to 100%, that I don't re-tweak it or do any further damage. Don't, don't fall out of your seat. It's, uh, I don't think my bicep's gonna come off. But I think if every day, or every arm day, I tried to push it, and like I tried curl in 70s and 80s every bicep day without backing off, because I know it's kind of, I don't want to say fucked up, but compromised. After a couple lifts like that, I think I could be in, let's call it a predicament. So, triceps only. I'll throw in a little bit of forearms, too, at the end. And this will be a quick fucking lift. You know, triceps. I need this fucking hostility to kick in, goddammit. Um, yeah, triceps is going to be pretty much the same as normal that I've been doing. Uh, I'm going to, well, I, don't know, I might change it up. I may change it up a little bit. But really, you know, I know for a fact I'm going to do a, at least two sets of the overhead dumbbell so I can get a really good stretch on the long head. But other than that, I mean, it's really just whatever I sort of feel like, you know. Cross body, single arm cable extensions, <gasps> straight bar pushdowns, dips, you know, I mean, that's it. Maybe a couple different handles, but I'd say triceps, they're a little, they're definitely more complicated than buys. 
you know, biceps, I'm, con I'm pretty much content doing just one set of, or one kind of curls for the whole workout, as long as it feels good, I'm getting a good pump, and, you know, I could feel the fatigue building up. Oh my gosh. But tries, apart from those overhead dumbbell extensions, single arm, which I am adding specifically because of the stretch that it gives me. Other than that, I can really kind of just do whatever I think is going to be good. And in the spirit of a, or not in the spirit, but to change it up every workout, which I do feel is going to be beneficial for you, just, you know, different stimuli, whatever. Then sometimes I might start with a really heavy set, like whole stack, two plates on the side, whatever. Or I might start off with a lighter squeezing set, you know, maybe just do the rope with like half the stack. And instead of just busting out rep after rep, go a lot slower and then seriously squeeze for like a whole second at the bottom of each one and do kind of a slow controlled burning set. So that's sort of the approach in my mind with triceps. But, uh, you know, it's just no point discussing it if we're about to do it in, you know, 0.1 seconds. So let's just get in there. It's been a little while since I've started with just normal heavy ass straight bar pushdowns. So did a couple of warm up sets, you know, half a stack for a couple reps, a little heavier, whole stack, plate, two plates. And on these warm up sets, I'm not doing any work. I'm not really tiring myself out. All I'm doing is, well, warming up, you know, getting ready, getting exposed to the weight. So when I actually throw the whole working set around, I don't rip my triceps off. Not that I think that would actually happen, but it's like, you know, when, if I squat with no warm up, my knees are just on fire. But if I sit on the leg extension for a couple of minutes and progressively increase the weight and expose, you know, all my tendons and ligaments down there to some force, then once they're warm, by the time I start squatting, you know, they feel pretty good. Same thing applies to triceps. So if you've got some tender elbows, I think there may be a remedy, just a little bit of a longer warm up time. But I'm going to sit here for at least, oh, I mean, I guess at least one. We'll go from there. Maybe, maybe I'll do a few more. Actually, I'm going to take this other handle. Yeah, one more like that. Another thing I've noticed, I've tried to adjust my push down form because I used to do push downs just down here. Like my triceps wouldn't even hit 90. I'd stay right down here and just pump out weight that way. Now, I still felt some solid fatigue stimulus. I still got crazy pumped, but you know, we've all heard long, I don't know, what's the, what's the term? Tension in the stretched position. That's good for you. That's what I'm trying to bias for triceps now. So let's, uh, let's do one more just like that. That's enough here. Let's do the uh, the overhead dumbbell. Um, I think yeah, the fifties will be good for this. No need to do like an astronomical amount of weight. Oop. All right. Apart from the fact that it's kind of a funky movement to have your arm way up here with a weight behind your head, uh, I will give you this word of warning: be fucking careful with your balance. Uh, well, I've never done it with one arm, but when I was in high school, 
I was doing a set with like, I don't know what it was, maybe like a hundred, where I had like one dumbbell behind my head like this, and I lost my balance and I fell backwards. Luckily, I was able to just like fall on the ground and throw the dumbbell to the side, but a hundred pounder to the nose, ugh, not good, not good. But if it's just one arm, you can kind of hold on to something for stability. Just something to keep in mind if you've never done it. The left triceps a little ahead of the game compared to the right one so whenever I do these single sided movements if the smaller one fails at 15 then I stop the stronger one at 15 so the smaller one can catch up but let's do some cross body extensions and we're close to done we are close to done I'd usually start with this movement so right now the weight is half of what I'd usually start with. You know, usually if this was movement number one, I'd be doing like 40 or maybe 50 if I was feeling kind of strong. But now that I'm already so fatigued from those heavy push downs plus the overhead extensions, I only need, honestly 23 might even be a little excessive. I might just do 20. So I'm not so concerned with the weight on this movement. You know, if I wanted to do a movement where I really moved a lot of weight around, I'd, I'd jump onto dips or just go back to push downs. What I want to get out of this set here is just a crazy burn. And the part of the rep that's going to give me that feeling is when I've got my arms completely straightened. So my triceps are physically, in terms of the movement path of my arm, as flexed as they can get. But I can still flex even harder. You know, you can do a dumbbell curl or you can do a leg extension and get to the top of the range of motion that you have. Like leg extensions, you straighten your leg all the way out or a dumbbell curl, you curl up to here. But just because it's up here doesn't mean the rep is totally done. You can still get an extra bit of squeeze, which will do you good. You know, in terms of long-term gains, I can't speak to the fact that it's like more effective than any other set, but I do know that it helps me get a crazy pump, which I'd say holds a reasonably strong correlation. But let's throw this around. I think that's a good finisher judging on just the hard number of or the number of hard sets that were done overall kind of how fatigued I feel 
and the pump. That is telling me in my mind that I think I've done enough to have a good stimulating tricep lift. So let's go see how they look pumped. Yeah, let's just call it a tries. Feels kind of weird just doing one small muscle group like that. But the other body part on the agenda is, let's not say out of commission, but let's call it requiring some extra rest. So let's see how arms look with just triceps pumped up. And honestly, I'm pretty much fine with just a tricep pump because I feel like my tries are lacking behind my biceps. So I almost feel like when my triceps are pumped up, that my arms look more proportional, you know? Yeah, exactly. This is what I'm going for. This is what I want out of this bulk, especially compared to all the bulks previous, which I've just sort of been, you know, trying to put on size everywhere evenly. I wanted to improve my tricep training. And I think that doing those overhead dumbbell extensions is going to help me. Just with that extra long stretch, I don't know, man. I just feel like it's given me more stimulus. Like, I get crazy pumps by doing crazy amount of weight on pushdowns. Just stand down here, fucking baby reps, whatever. But I think I've been slacking on that stretch position for tries. And hopefully over the course of the next few months, that change will actually show up in terms of the results. So, oh yeah, yeesh. That's just one thing that's going to be nice next time I cut down. Hopefully if my triceps do blow up on this bulk, I'll get way more feathering action. So not only will your muscles develop, you know, size wise, just get bigger, but they'll also sort of get a texture and grain, at least a few of them, mainly quads, triceps and chest come to mind. Like you do a front most muscular and you see all these fibers poking out sick. And then with triceps, you do have to be pretty lean, but you flex real hard. You'll start to see these sort of cross striations creeping across them, which just look fucking sick. But yeah, man. I swear, triceps pumped, that is what I'm really lacking, as well as just bigger legs. I also want a bigger chest, I want a wider back and lats. Shoulders are all right for now, but I'm sure once everything gets bigger too, I'll want bigger shoulders. So I feel like Sisyphus right now. Not that I am fucking complaining, not in the fucking slightest, but let's get in the car. We're done. This is a quick one. Who knows, man? Maybe this is just a sign. Maybe this is a sign that I should chill out on biceps and bias tries. You know, this may be just bro science talking, but it would make sense if you require less nutrients and energy for one portion of your body, then another portion would be able to get, you know, extra and recover a little bit harder. So. Blessing in disguise, perhaps, but do uh, I am not going to let you catch me do another bicep workout until I feel 100%. So if, uh, if, if you think I call it too early, you know, keep me in check. I've got a, I've still got a fucking ego a little bit. You know, I try to be Zen enough to say, okay, I, I, this is not the right move. I should not get this bicep pump right now. I should just keep resting it. But it's kind of hard to say that because I know I want a bicep pump and I'll sort of do a little bit of like bargaining in my mind. Like, okay, I'll, I'll just go light. I'll just do a light workout. I'll just, I'll just stick to like the thirties and below and just get a pump. You know, I think I, uh, yeah, I think that's me in denial. That's me in fucking denial, but no triceps destroyed. I'm definitely going to feel them tomorrow especially from that last burnout set with the cable extensions. I mean, those were fucking brutal. Maybe not in, oh, obviously not in terms of the weight that was lifted, because, I mean, that was like nothing. Anybody could do that weight. But just squeezing that hard on the first few reps when I was nice and fresh, 
and then burning out with progressively shorter and shorter partials as I got more and more fatigued. That was a uh, that was just the cherry on top in terms of that tricep workout. So I was only in there for like 30 minutes, man. That was a quick one. So luckily, uh, or not luckily, hopefully I'll make use of that relatively easy day. I mean, that lift in terms of the fatigue and like, let's just call it a, uh, well, yeah, I guess fatigue's the only word that it did to my whole system. Uh, not that much. Definitely not as much as compared to a real leg day or eh, even chest and back. So I'm going to make use of that potentially extra rest, get a good ass night's sleep, stay nice and full, full of food, water, electrolytes, and tomorrow's leg day should be as brutal as I can muster, as crazy as I can get. So hamstrings, I do not have, ah, shit. You want to hear something? I'm at a crossroads. Not really, but I find that it's very easy for me to do a good hamstring lift. Like, something about my strength or whatever. If I go to the gym and I do hamstrings before legs, then hamstrings always pumped to hell. I feel like they're going to rip off the back of my knees when I stand up straight and like fully straighten my legs. Always fatigued, always throwing around a good amount of weight on the hamstring curls. The RDLs always fucking burn. It's never really a problem. Quads, on the other hand, sometimes I'm subject to having a little bit of an off day. Like, you know, sometimes, or let's just say some muscle groups for you may be a little bit more stingy when it comes to, <clears throat> I want to say getting a pump, but really just kind of overall vibe or performance of the lift. You know, tries for me, I mean, hardly, well, never have a problem getting pumped buys either side delts rear delts always easy back always pumped uh chest on well you yeah. know chest on occasion maybe a little bit finicky if i'm not perfectly hydrated or maybe not super well rested i can definitely tell that my um my strength may dip a little bit and that my sets may not be so intense if i don't prepare properly but quads i'd say are the most susceptible to being affected by my preparation for me to do or for me to come in to do an arm day or a back day even well let's maybe not a chest day but let's, arms guaranteed i could come in and do an arm day get a pretty solid pump off of like not a lot of sleep uh, and that's not a recommendation of course i would never want to do that i'm just saying like it's not so fatiguing if my whole system is kind of taxed from not being properly rested the night before, it's such a small muscle group that I can still get a good lift in without really too much problem. Of course, I want to be fully rested for every lift, but you know, I'm just kind of making a point. But with legs, it, it's such a big muscle that I feel like it almost has a larger say, or my body almost has a larger say in how strong and, let's just say, efficient they're going to be. You know, if I'm not properly well rested and I haven't eaten all my food or whatever else, then my leg day is going to suffer. So that's where I've got to take it upon myself to ensure that even though I'm not in the gym, I'm still kind of dictating what I do based upon the fact that I'm going to be in the gym the next day doing a specific thing, if you, uh, if you catch my drift. So some packs of ramen some milk. I had some cinnamon toast crunch today again. I wouldn't call it a staple, but definitely not a rare meal. Uh, some ground beef, some cheese. I might even do some rice. Hard to say. Hard to say what exactly I'm going to eat tonight, but I'm going to make sure that I am as full as full can be for tomorrow. And then, of course, all the pre-workout meals I'm going to scarf down too. So... The three, well, actually, I guess those are the only two. Uh, no, there's three, right? If I want to have a good lift, I want these three things checked off. Sleep, good night's rest, hydration, 
drinking a ton of water. Like as soon as I wake up, I want to slam some electrolyte packets or some Silo 9, the hostile amino mix that does have some electrolytes inside. So sleep, hydration, and then of course, food. But honestly, I'd say food is probably third on the menu because I can still have a good lift when I'm dieting down if I get a good night's rest and I'm well hydrated. So food, I'd say is my last concern. But of course, since I'm trying to gain weight, it almost supersedes the other two and becomes my first concern. But you get the idea. You know, let's cut it down to the lowest common denominators of progress. Eat, sleep, and train. None of those can be out of whack too much or else you're not going to make gains. And I've been making this little analogy a lot as of late. If you can tell that you have not made any noticeable progress for the past, I mean, I want to say years, but even, even if like you've been trying to make progress and it's been one month and you've seen no changes, then that should be an indicator that you should change what you're doing. You know? So you know, cut it down to the basics, eat, sleep, train. Which one of those three is out of whack? You're probably not eating enough, perhaps. Maybe you're not getting enough sleep. That's when you're growing. When you're in the gym, all you're doing is ripping yourself down. You gotta go to bed, get some solid REM, build yourself back up. But you know, do not think that you're training as hard as you can train. That is the, uh, I don't know what kind of fallacy that is, but if you think you're, tra if you think you're going as hard as you can go, then you are just blatantly incorrect. You know, I know for a fact, if I do a set of leg extensions to failure, but someone like a scientist can jump onto my quads with electrode probes or whatever and like use a computer with high voltage uh, Frankenstein style to like force my quads to contract I could probably do an extra 10 reps like my quads all your muscles are physically capable of much more than you than you than you are capable of exerting so you can always get a little bit more out of the tank when it comes to your training intensity and that's not me telling you that, like, I'm a monk and I train as hard as I can. I always want to train harder. And whenever I have a day where I'm kind of a little bit like, ah, oh, geez, that was kind of fucked. That's my cue to sort my shit out and make sure that the next lift and the ones consecutive afterwards, right, I actually meet the bar of intensity, which will let me get in the car, get back to the house, eat my post-workout meal, watch some Sopranos, and say... Today was a good ass day of training. But time to go home, eat, take my big ass bowl of vitamins, fish oil as well. I definitely think you should be maxing out your omega 3 intake. That's, uh, I don't know the exact scientific whatever, but guarantee that shit is fucking good for you. Sleep and then cardio. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll record it this time just to really rub it in your face. But, uh, I'll fucking see you next time.